tailor in the best way I can the discussion around what a blockchain is. And like people can go out there and research what it is and understand the tools and some of the processes that it comes to, you know, what makes a blockchain, what, what matters. I'm gonna break it down from a solution architect standpoint of why it matters to like business, government, anybody that's interacting with it in the, in the so what factor. So I'm gonna pick this up and we're gonna be using the whiteboard today. So what it comes down to is traditional computing in general and the evolution of what blockchain brings to it. And I'm gonna explain this from the concept of traditional computing being data and compute. And you can take databases, data, I don't care if it's in SANS, NASs, whatever, it doesn't matter. Data in general, storage and compute, which is processing, business logic, that kind of thing, right? It could be your CPU, it can be a data center of a whole bunch of servers, whatever. All of this stuff, by and large, is what we call local group, meaning data execution, um, processing, all this stuff is done on like a CPU. It's done on a, a an individual centralized set, right? So you could ramp this up, duplicate it, have lots of computers, even do some limited parallelization of certain tasks. What a blockchain comes in and does is allows those data and those compute components and the compute components really coming down to like smart contracts and Ethereum and EOS and any kind of platform coin that takes an EVM, like an EVM from Ethereum is like an uh, Ethereum virtual machine, right? So what it's doing is it's taking data and compute and this is a whole bunch of C's and D's here. And it puts it over a time series. And it executes, essentially, operations, which are transactions of information and changes state. Now, we haven't even got into, like, tokenization and coins yet. I'm just talking functionality, what's going on underneath. So if you have a traditional local group, you have a centralization of processing and data, you know, database activity. Right, like, and I'm talking at an operation level. Like, come, don't bring your mind to just like, oh, well, there's several data centers and they're they're shared and they can be redo. No, I'm talking the entire core operation of computing and a data, the instance of that state of that information at that point in time, being computed by a central, you know, process code that's been written to run it on a, a particular database, versus the concept of it being wrapped into a transaction on a time series that a whole bunch of participants all agree that that occurred and that there's been no duplication, right? It's immutable. It has finality, right? And then this is shared and distributed, right? So now you have this essential, all these actions occurring on a time series that is essentially the blockchain and they're all predicated from each other with a leading hash and you can there's different consensus mechanisms like some are proof of work like hey i did work and this occurred oh by the way i have all these transactions and i'm bundling that as part of it so you have the basic blockchain well yes something like bitcoin that comes in and says cool we made this and it functions and it works mathematically and mind you, that's by and large just the data set, the data side. And when I say data, don't think IPFS, like storage. It does have limited amounts of storage, but it's really the business logic, like events occurred. Computes kind of the EVM level. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compute something. I'm going to do some computation, and I'm going to leave a result of that or the posted result of that. And it costs a function, a gas, to occur, to make that, to say that that actually occurred, right? Um, and then it, it essentially posts that in within those sets of transactions as you're going on. If you look at something like a blockchain that has a tokenization effort to it, it's essentially saying, I wanna complete this activity. However, I wanna incentivize a whole bunch of individuals, people, processes to be decentralized and I want to be able to host this. And for that hosting, I'm gonna award those folks a token. Our mining does the activity to uphold those networks for those things to occur. But bottom line, it's a it's a digital asset that is traded and commoditized between people. Platform style coins has that function to uphold have people uphold it. They're paying people in Ether. EOS has a proof of stake uh, consensus with regards to 
things occurred on this, the consensus that yes, this happened in this state on, under this transaction, under this block, these are the different blocks of things that happened and there's tons of transactions underneath it. But when you look at this kind of model to where it's going across the timeline versus the local group versus a centralized way of doing things to a decentralized, that's the evolution. That's that's what matters is that at an execution step, I don't have to trust a centralized system to do it. I can mathematically entrust in a decentralized version of that that has the entire providence of what happened. And if I want to make updates to things that were back here, it makes a separate transaction now on this timeline here, referencing, hey, I'm making some changes here, but that's still the, the, the previous history doesn't change, right? Where here, if I had an execution step occur, I may capture some metadata from that or activity data into a database that something occurred, but that's stored again in something that's not immutable. And the facts that, you know, when we get way down into the weeds of like execution steps and did somebody have authorization to something and then those tracks can get covered up because now that database is obfuscated in some way that an execution step occurred here. You don't even know it, something happened to you, right? So moving this, the, the entire, everything that's in compute in general and storage is in this world. Moving it to this world's a very, that's the stuff that takes a lot of time because you have to go in there and you have to architect a lot of the different components and how they're going to wire up and speed matters in certain things, storage matters in other things, you know, business logic is very complex sometimes on some situations and doing iterations of this is what's going on right now. That's why you keep hearing, you're like, you see the price, you're like, oh my God, everybody's saying it's all going to fail. It's all going to fail. No, dude, there is so much going on in this space. It's ridiculous. But I want to give everybody a kind of a concept of what, from a different way that I have not heard from anybody, at least in the media, explaining on how a blockchain, like what, who cares? Like, why does it matter? Okay, so it's got immutability and all these other buzzwords that we hear, but how functionally, what is going on? from a compute and a data standpoint compared to the existing. This is kind of an as is and a to be type of setup.